Hi, in this video, we're going to go over a few visual things such as adding a section box and hiding different parts or pieces. These are things that we may have gone over in class before, but I just want to make sure I have them in video highlighted for um, anyone who may be watching. We're also going to add a staircase to the cardinal in here finally. Now, the staircase we're going to add may not fit exactly the way it's shown in the original floor plan. And so we're going to get also to the very exciting step this time where we get to delete the linked CAD file that we have in here. Um, within our staircase too, we'll then modify some of our wall profiles to help make them fit a little bit nicer and look at the paint tool for how we can add things like accent walls and that. And then we're also going to start off with just adding in some components. So components we can kind of think of as like CAD blocks where we are putting in our different features like our kitchen cabinets, our bathroom fixtures, and also just furniture in general can be components. Um, components can also be found online, much like CAD blocks too. So I'll give you some websites and some tips for adding components and which ones you may want to go with. But first, let's look at our file from where we left off. So we ended in which I added a site to my building. This is a site that was imported in from CAD Mapper. One thing is that the site is rather large. It's much larger than the piece of property that we have, which is fine. It'll make for really nice renderings when we go to put it into Enscape, but it's just a little bit too much to look at here in the 3D view. So one thing we can do to help with that is to turn on a section box, and that will also help with lag and things a lot. So I'm gonna scroll down in my 3D view properties about halfway down and I'm just going to check off the section box and move my cursor out and that's going to bring this box up and then I can click on the edge of the box and I can bring it in on kind of all four sides. So what this is going to do is just kind of cut my site into just kind of a little bit of a more manageable piece of land because theoretically I'm not going to be able to do anything over here because none of this is actually property that I own. Um, but what's also really helpful is that we can use this height one here to bring these um, section boxes down. And so I have now brought it down where it's in the middle of what is the floor that I put on my second floor. But then I can also use it to be able to look at all of the different features inside my house. Um, so when I start adding in some of my kitchen stuff, I can look at it in a little bit more detail within here. So my next step to start adding in features like my stairs is I'm just gonna to go to my level one floor plan and I'm going to do a very exciting step in which I'm going to click on the CAD drawing and delete it because theoretically I'm not gonna need it anymore. I still could use it to help me figure out like, okay, a toilet's gonna to go here, a uh, sink's gonna go here, a water heater will keep be here and with my kitchen layout and everything, but I also can stray a little bit from that original drawing of the Cardinal. Um, but what I'm going to do, like I mentioned, is add in my staircase. So adding in the stairs is going to be with the stair button here. It's going to add railings to it automatically. And I'll show you a little bit too about how you can edit those if you want them to. But we're just going to use the plain stair tool. And when I go into stair, it's going to bring me into a menu similar to we what we looked at when we added in floors and what we added in roofs, in which I have to kind of draw in or add in the features of my stairs and then either finish it or cancel it. By default, the staircase that it's gonna give us is just a straight staircase where we're saying we wanted to end at level one and, or rather start at level one and end at level two. And then it is gonna give us a generic number of steps and it's basing then how tall those steps are gonna to be to go with 18 steps at a 10 foot height. If I change this number by increasing it, we can see then that my riser height will change as well. We can play around with numbers like this um, to kind of get a feel for making our stairs fit better. I'll just use 20 to see just kind of how it looks. And we're actually gonna use a different stair type within this house, but to just show you how the steps can work is I just pretty much click where I want the steps to start and then it will count up into how many we have remaining. So you can see as I move it, it's telling me how many steps it's made and how many it would need to make to reach the height it wants to reach with the desired amount. 
I can also click halfway through the steps or kind of wherever I necessarily want to, and then click again to continue creating the steps where I'm kind of making a landing or a turn. But the way our stairs actually work are more of like a winder or a winding set of stairs. So I'm going to take these stairs and delete them and just look at some of the other types of stairs that we have. So we already just looked at the straight staircase by just a start point and an end point. And then we can also do a spiral staircase in which it's going to just kind of make a full circle around a center. We can do a curved set of stairs, which will just be a spiral with a center point, but it's not necessarily going around a full amount. We can do an L-shaped winder, which is sort of what we want in this case, but really what we want is this U-shaped winder because this then is going to make steps where it's just going to go around in a half circle without having any landing necessarily. So it's more of a square, but it still is making a turn around that radius. So I'm gonna click on this one as an option and I'm just going to click to start my stairs. They definitely are not where I want them to be at the moment, but now I can play around with them by clicking on the steps again and then I can pull some of these features out. As I pull kind of my pathway out, I'm gonna to start to get warnings. So it's saying if I pull this out any further, it's not gonna be able to create the stairs with all of the parameters I have set. So then I can click to kind of lessen this one and then pull this out a little bit more, lessen this again. I'll be able to pull this out a little bit more and basically what I'm trying to do is create stairs that can fit in here pretty comfortably. I can also click and drag them into place. Or what I always like to do is use the keys on my keyboard to kind of shuffle these stairs into place a little bit. And let's see if I can pull this out just a little bit more because that's going to fit pretty well with how I have my floor and everything sitting. Um, I might need to adjust my floor on the second story for where I have that opening, but this is going to fit pretty well on here. These are the stringers that are holding my steps together, so I am going to want to keep those there unless I have like a really modern style building in which I want to have these as kind of just exposed sides. But for this house, we're just going to leave the stringer sitting in place and then I'll click the green check to make my stairs, which we now have our staircase. If I look at it three dimensionally, we can see it starting to go up. We'll also see too a little bit that if I orbit around, we have an issue with this wall and where the steps are gonna be sitting with it. So we'll fix that. We're also gonna to wanna to fix with this wall here, I'm gonna cut its profile so that way it's just kind of sitting flush and this is kind of just an exposed part to it. So in order to fix that part with that wall, what I'm going to do is in the 3D view, I'm going to click on this section box and I'm just going to bring it in so that way I'm kind of just looking internally at my house or at my building and then I'm just going to look at it directly from the front case because that's going to make it a little bit easier to select this wall and edit its profile. I'm also going to bring this up just a little bit so I can make sure that I'm looking at the full height of this wall. And I can either double click this wall or I can click on it once and then select edit profile. What this is just warning me is that when I edit this wall's profile, it's gonna remove it from the constraint of being attached here, which I'm totally fine with. I'm gonna click on this top line and use the delete key on my keyboard to get rid of it. I'm gonna click on this line here and just bring it down so that it's sitting flush with where that stringer sits. I'll bring this one down and I'll kind of estimate it for the time being because then I'm gonna draw a new line in that just follows this stringer to its resting place. And then I'll hit the check mark. I'm gonna unjoin that wall from the floor and what that's just done is it's allowed me to kind of create like a little profile of this wall where it's not necessarily sitting all the way to the top height. While we're here in this view, 
We can also double check some things. So like with my floor, how I mentioned the floor up here is gonna be like protruding a little bit into this staircase. I could fix that also by just adjusting the way this stair sits, but should be okay. Um, we'll get rid of parts of this railing too while we're at it. So my first thing is I'm gonna select the floor itself. If you're having trouble getting the floor, which let me also turn shadows off just to make it a little easier to select things. Um, but if you're having trouble getting the floor, you can use the tab key to try to shuffle through selections. And then I'm just gonna wanna edit its boundary, look at it straight from the top. And then I'm just gonna edit this, pull it out to here where that stringer sits. And then I'm gonna draw a new line for the boundary around the edge of the steps which I didn't bring that all the way. So I'll hit escape a couple times and I'll bring that down to meet it and make that join. So when I click the, gr the green check here and I attach that, I'll unjoin. And that's just gonna adjust my, my floor there. So that way this stair kind of fits a little bit more evenly. I could absolutely play around with the numbers of these steps too to kind of make this sit nice and flush here. I could also just bring this wall out a little bit more to make it sit flush, but I'm okay with how it's sitting for now. I'll sleep just fine with it. And while I'm in here too, I'm gonna, or in this view, I'm going to click on the CAD file in here and delete it from the drawing because I don't need that one as well. And now I'm, I'll start playing around with my railing. So I don't wanna actually completely delete this whole railing on this side because on the first floor, I kind of like having a little bit of railing there. I could though also take this wall on my first floor and just extend it out, which I might actually opt to do that instead. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna opt and do that instead. So I'm gonna delete this entire railing. So I'm gonna get rid of that railing because I really won't need it on that side. And then I'll go into my first floor plan and I'll just take this wall and I'll just extend it out to be where that sits. If I want it to sit completely flush too, I can use the align tool to say this um, face or this feature, bring that out to meet it so that way it sits completely nice and flush. Um, and I'm gonna draw in another wall here as well. So I'm gonna go into the architecture tab. I'll go into the wall tool and I'm gonna use my custom interior wall to put a wall right here. I'll go into my 3D view to look at it um, because I don't want it going just to an unconnected height. So then I'm going to click on its pro on it, edit its profile, and do kind of the same thing that I did with this one over here. But again, my section box is not going to help me with how it's currently set. So I'm actually going to close out of editing it and then bring this section box in a little too far there, quite too far actually, which there we go. Then I'll look at it from the right side, which I can click on this wall, edit its profile, delete its top line, bring the bottom line down or the right line down, bring this one down, and then follow along, which I was parallel or flush, so I'll hit escape and I'll draw that line in again. When this line's being highlighted with that blue color, that means that I'm sitting kind of flush with it. And then I can hit escape, bring this one down. And so it's just kind of making little um, half walls or little portions of walls I can even edit its profile again and just bring, bring it up. Let's see if I like it better if I keep it nice and flush with that because I feel like I might like that better. Pull that up. I like how that looks a little bit nicer. Let's pull that up to 
keeping that nice and flush. And then I can pull my section box back out, pull this back out, and then I have my railings kind of situated and figured out, which, whoops, I'm getting a little dizzy there with how some of my uh, orbiting is going. My next thing that I would have to do would be edit the profile of this wall right here so it's sitting nice and cozy underneath the steps, which would be easiest scenario is in the 3D view. You guessed it. Pull my section box and just kind of play with it until I can see that wall a little bit clearer and how it sits with the steps. Go into my right view and then click on this wall, edit its profile, this is warning me that it's going to remove it from the floor, which is okay. And then I'm going to just move it so that it's sitting down underneath the steps, even though the door is also going to have to get adjusted too, which it might yell at me for. We'll have to see in a second. Um, but I'm going to move this in and bring this one back up. and attach it. So let's see, I'll hit escape. Might yell at me about the door. Can't keep the walls joined, that's fine. So it didn't yell at me about the door, which is okay. But we're still gonna have a problem in the fact that this door now is still taller than the steps. Since this is just for like a little closet or storage area underneath the steps, I'll just click on it, edit its type, duplicate it and call it staircase door or stair door. And then I'm just gonna edit its height to be around like, let's try six foot. And then hit okay. Um, six foot is still a little bit too tall. And in fact, I'm actually gonna have to edit this profile a little bit more because we can still see a little bit of wall peeking up here. So I'll look at it again from the right and I'll edit its profile, and I'll just use my arrow keys to just nudge that down. Which There we go, it's now sitting underneath the steps, which is all good and dandy. And then I'll click on my staircase door again and edit its type. And I'll make it five foot six. Pretty short door, but that's okay because this would be, you're kind of just, going in there real quick to just get something that maybe you're storing underneath there. Or if you're someone like me, maybe that's where you just like keep the cat litter box out of the way. And then when we're looking at our building itself, if I pull that out a little bit more, this is my whole building show. And I pull that in more. Like we have a little bit of like an alcove there kind of covering it anyway. So not too much of a worry, I think. All right, next thing that we can look at is the paint tool. Um, so this staircase right now is just kind of like a generic gray, which isn't ideal. Maybe we wanna put a little bit of material to it. So there's kind of two ways we can apply material for it. One would be to click on the stairs go into the edit function, and then select the stairs edit type. And then we should be able to change the material for it. It's a little bit of a different system than how we've been changing the material for some of our other things. So I can come into the tread material and say, you know, that I want the treads to be some type of wood. So if I search for wood, it will give me a couple of different options loaded in as well as a couple options that I could load in myself. So I kind of like this cherry. Um, so I'll use this one and I'll check off use render appearance. And then for my riser material, maybe I just want like white paint. So I'll come here and I'll search for white, which we have this clad white. And then I have render appearance checked off again and I'll click okay and okay. And then it has kind of the materials applied to them. We can also, I believe, while in this menu, we can change the stringers. So let's 
Let's double check. It doesn't appear that I have the ability to change the, the stringer material, but that's okay unless I click on it here and then go into edit type. Here's where I can change its material. And then I can also say that this is either just cloud white or I can make a cherry or I can make it whatever I want it to be. And then it'll change those to be white and notice how it's gonna change all of them. And then I can say okay to my stair edit. Um, but I can also use what's called the paint tool to change some of the materials when it comes to like my walls and my doors and any other feature that I want to. So the paint tool is located in the modify menu, which pops up automatically the moment you select anything. And it's located right here. The paint tool, it, it only is gonna load in materials that are in the project. So if you have different paint colors you wanna apply in areas, you're gonna have to make the materials first and then be able to paint them. But I'm just gonna click on paint and then we can see all of these different materials that get loaded in. And so by default, we only have kind of have that clad white paint or the parking stripe yellow paint, in which I can click on this wall and I can make just this wall yellow. Or I can click on like this wall and make this wall yellow to make kind of accent walls to it. So I can kind of just change specific parts of my materials and kind of draw in different accents if I wanted to. And the same can go for within our staircase, like I can paint parts of the stringer and apply that into it. But um, why I would want this bright neon yellow on there, that's beyond my comprehension. It's just the kind of one of the few colors that are preloaded in, but you can then create your own material colors and then load those in there. And so if you have kind of a color concept you wanna continue or play around with within your drawing or design. Sorry about that. Um, so that's how we can kind of just add our staircase in, paint things. If I wanna change materials related to my railings, it's actually a little bit of a weird process, sort of like how the staircase themselves is weird, where I can click on the railing itself, come into edit type, but this is only going to allow me to change the materials for at one piece. I believe just the balusters or just the railing itself gets changed. So I can go into the top rail, which is defined as just a two by two. That's a rectangle. I can edit it. And then here in the material, I can again come here and say that I want this to be cherry. And if I hit apply, it's gonna change that. If I wanna change the balusters in here, again, it's a kind of a weird process, but what I'm gonna do is scroll down in my project browser and open up my families. I'm gonna scroll down and look at my railings. And then I have my square balusters. And I believe these ones are three quarters of an inch. So I can, right click on here, go into its properties, change its material, and let's try my clad white, because I think that'll look nice. But this was not the correct size ones, or maybe it was, oh no, it was. Okay, so these are the three quarter inch ones. Um, so this one for some reason has that little bit of a different kind of process for it. I believe, we can't just right click on these and then kind of just reset them into it. Which is kind of a bummer because that would make it a heck of a lot easier to create and work with. So at this point, I would be ready to start adding in some of the features related to the components. So things like what's gonna go in our bathrooms and what's gonna go in our kitchen. And whenever I'm doing that, I always like to at least have the 3D view available so I can kind of section cut it just to look at how some of those things are being placed and how they look, but it's not totally necessary. So I'm gonna just scroll back up in my project browser and close out of my family thing here. Scroll up and I'm gonna go into my level one floor plan 
So that way I have the ability to just kind of place some components, particularly my kitchen stuff within the floor plan view, but then also go look at it in my 3D view if I just kind of want to see how stuff is coming together. Which by the way, I've had a few students ask me like, how do I orbit a little bit neater that the orbit tool is sometimes annoying. If you click on something in Revit, it makes that the center of your orbit. So that way, like when you move around, you can kind of see the kitchen a little bit more freely in session. I'll go back into my floor plan view and the way you're going to add in anything that isn't an actual like piece of the building. So kitchen stuff, furniture stuff, bathroom stuff, you're going to do that through the component button here. I'm just going to click on that. I want to place a component and we can see that I have a few options of what's preloaded in. I have some um, trees. I have a picture frame for whatever reason, and I have a desk, but that's pretty much it. That's preloaded in. If I want to load anything in, I'm just going to come up here to the load family button while I'm in the component tool. And then I have the ability to look at all of the different categories. Cabinetry and shelving and countertops are going to be in this casework area. And then some special features are in this entourage area. So this is where we can find things like cars, people, and a few just other random things. Furniture has a lot of furniture in it, for lack of a better term. <laughs> Lighting is where we can find some stuff that we'll play around with, particularly when we go over renderings, because we can add in lighting fixtures within here. So different lamps, whether they're going to be built into the ceilings or not. And then we can also find a lot of kitchen stuff in the specialty equipment folder. It's kind of weird that it's in specialty equipment. I wouldn't consider like a stove something special but that's what they consider in here as specialty equipment. So one of the first things I usually like to do is my kitchen stuff. And I'll go into the casework one. And I usually actually put a countertop in before I put any of my base cabinetry in. I'm not sure why, it's just kind of how I like working. So I'm gonna go into countertop and I'm gonna choose a countertop of most likely one of the L-shaped ones. Cause I'll be able to just put a straight one in and then an L-shaped kitchen or an L-shaped countertop. So as I look at the different countertops, I'm just gonna click on one and just kind of shuffle through what the different ones offer. And there's this one here of the countertop L-shaped with a sink. So this is the one that I'm gonna to choose to use in the scenario for my kitchen. And I'll open it up. And then if I wanna spin it around, I can use the space bar on my keyboard to spin it. I'm just gonna put my countertop in here I'm aware that it's not the right size at the moment, but that's okay. Because then what I can do is hit escape to end the command and I can actually drag it to fit the size that I want it to. And I can actually move my sink too. So if I want to kind of move my sink over to be a little bit more centered underneath the window, I can. I'll also need to move the sink hole over as well. Why they don't move in unison, I'm not sure, but that's okay. And then to put another counter in over here, I will use just a straight one. I'm trying to think of what I want to do necessarily for like my stove. Um, Cause I might just shorten this guy out and then put like an oven here or a stove here. So again, I'm going to go back into the component tool, but now I only just have this countertop that's an L shaped one. So I'll come into load family and I'll just do a straight countertop. I'll open it. I'll hit the space bar to flip it. It's obviously much too long. So I'm just gonna drag it down because it's way more counter than I want. I can use the join tool to connect these into one or apparently make it disappear. That's wonderful. But there we go, it's still here, which is the good news. Why did it make it disappear in this view? Let's try that again. If not, I'm just going to leave that ugly thing there. Join this to this. Control Z. What about this to this? Okay. Since it's making it disappear for whatever reason, I'm not sure, but I'm just going to leave that ugly line there. So my apologies for that ugly line. To add in some of my other kitchen features, like I'll put in an oven here and then I'll put in a fridge as well and then continue just kind of adjusting my countertops. 
I'll go back into the component tool. You can see here it's keeping a track record of every one that you've loaded in, but I still don't have any other stuff other than counters. So I'm gonna come into load family. I'm going to look back into the English Imperial Library and then go down into the specialty equipment folder. So in here, we can see that there's a few just random things that I would count as specialty equipment. But then we also have like toilet rooms, office equipment, lab equipment, and then we have domestic, which has a lot of kitchen stuff in it. So if I go into the domestic one, we see some just cooktop ranges, we see a dryer, we see a chest freezer, we see just kind of full done kitchenettes, a microwave, And then I'll use just this typical range and this typical fridge. You also see here that there's two folders, high end. So these are just kind of some nicer looking appliances that you are free to use if you want. And then we also have mid range, which again is just kind of, you know, same appliances, but a little bit nicer. Maybe I'll use these ones actually instead. So I'll do the mid range electric range. And I'll use my space bar to flip it around. I'll put it in place, which I believe I just put it in backwards. So if I look at it 3D, I can see that I indeed have it in backwards. So I'll just click on it and hit the space bar to flip it around and then just kind of drag it into place. If you dislike that this text is popping up within it, we again can change that within some of the settings or we can even go into it and change it in here, but that might actually be a little bit too much. So if I double click on it, I can come into the model and I can go look at what it's gonna look like in a floor plan and get rid of the text. But I'm thinking that that might be a little bit too advanced for us on our first project. So I'm gonna click no for that. Um, sure, let's save. And then we can actually just edit the visibility within here to hide that. So I'm going to edit, come down here. Let's see if they have it as its own specific stuff for like electrical things. MEP equipment. Mm-hmm. Furniture, furniture systems, electrical fixtures, electrical fixtures. I'm trying to see if they have anything in here related to that particular piece of text. They might just have its own thing here though for text. Here, I'll, I'll pause and I'll figure it out so you don't have to wait. Oh, it was actually a trillion times easier than I thought. So I was trying to go through all of the different visibilities, particularly within the annotation category and like turn a bunch of them off. But it's just click on it, edit type, and then just say, don't show label. And then bada bing. Now the big word range is not in here. And so I'll load in a fridge as well. I'll go into the architecture tab, I'll go back into the component. I'll load in a family. It always drops you off in the very last one that you are in. So I'll use the fridge. I like this one. I'll open it and place it. I might want to place it here and then just move my countertop over a little bit. And I'll look at it in the 3D view just to make sure I've placed it the right way, which this time I have. Go into my level one floor plan. Again, this would be then I click on it, edit type, uncheck to show the tag. And so that way it just doesn't have the word fridge there. And then I'm going to click on this countertop and just drag it out a little bit more. So I have a little bit more counter space in here. To add in lower cabinets and upper cabinets would be kind of the same thing where I'm gonna go into component load family, and then to get back into my cabinets, I'm going to change my look in back to the English Imperial Library, casework, 
um, base cabinets. And then we have a couple of different sizes and a couple of different styles. So you can, of course, click on one and then use just like your arrow keys to shuffle through. I've always just kind of liked cabinets for base ones. I kind of like drawers. These are vanities. They're more for bathrooms. Mm. Maybe I'm just being a little too picky. So I'll use this one. I can again use the space keys to kind of flip it around. It also, you can see too that it comes in different sizes. So I can change the size of it too if I need a different size to fit. If you're unsure, if you have it facing the right way, sometimes it's just best to place it and then go into your 3D view to see if you have it backwards. So in this case of this one, I did just put it in backwards. So I can click on it and I can use the space bar to kind of flip it around. Or I can go into my level one view. I can orbit it. Sometimes this is an area too where having your views tiled might help. So if I only just have like my 3D view and my level one view, I can go views, tile, which just will allow me to look at this floor plan and the 3D view. So kind of as I'm spinning this around, you can see if I have it facing the correct way or not. I'll go into the architecture, go component, I'll load family. This time I'm going to want some type of L cabinet or a corner piece rather. Um, I like this one. So I'll go with this one. I'll open it. I'll use my space bar to flip it. It's definitely in the case right now, it's a little too big, which it doesn't seem like there's a smaller size. So I've got kind of two options. One would be to shrink this cabinet down to a smaller size, or I could even take this L-shaped one here by just hitting tab, and I can edit its type to shrink it down. So I can edit it, duplicate, and say smaller, corner and right now it has a depth of two and a width of three and so let's see if I give it a width of two and a half does that make it where it can fit in my corner a little bit better so that kind of seems to fit what I want it to do a little bit nicer so I just reversed it and then I can also, I can make that fit a little bit nicer. Let's do two foot eight. And that then seems to work much, much better. I can also then do a sink cabinet sitting underneath here. So again, component, load family, It'll be base cabinet with sink. We have a little bit of a larger size, we sure do. I think I just put that one in backwards. I'm having a real good time putting them in back. It kind of looks backwards to me. I don't know about you. Now it's sitting in the middle of my house. And sometimes it's just really sitting and playing around with some of these components, cutting these components down, finding the exact sink you want, finding the exact cabinet you want to put in them in. Bathroom fixtures are also in here, so I can go component, load family, and then back into English Imperial. And they are some of them, or most of them rather, are in the plumbing, architectural, and then fixtures. The only thing you're going to find in equipment is a water heater, which we still would have to load in. 
So I can put a water heater back here. And let me just untile my views while I'm at it. Put it back into tab. And then things like my cabinets. So I'll go back into my architecture. Load family, or rather things like my toilet would be just back in the plumbing, architectural fixtures. We have bathtubs, we have showers, we have sinks. We have toilets are known as water closets. When you're picking things out from here, you also want to keep in mind if it's just only going to load in a 2D graphic or if it's going to actually put a 3D model in. So if I do 3D, it'll load a model in which I can put my toilet here. And I can do a 3D model of my sink. And I could do a lot of different things. I can include my washer and dryer within here. And that's what's going to be asked of you is to do everything for the kitchen, the bathroom, and the washer dryer. You do not have to add in all of the furniture within the living room and the bedrooms because we'll sh I'll show you how to do that within Enscape as well as kind of like a better option for it. Um, but one thing you can definitely look at too um, for finding different components to put into your buildings is through softwares or rather through websites like Revit City or BIM Object. But I also just remembered too, we need to load in these columns here. So to load in these three just timber columns here, I'm just going to click on the little arrow underneath column to say I want to put architectural columns in. By default, it's giving me this two, by, two foot by two foot column, which is a little bit larger than I want. And we don't really have a smaller size. So what are we going to do? We're going to load in a family. We're going to go back because it always puts us in the last folder we were looking in. So I'm going to go back into my English Imperial folder. I'm going to go into columns and I'm just going to load in a wood timber and click OK. And it gave me a six by eight. I believe these are six by six posts. So I'm just going to put one of them here at the end. It's OK if it's not perfectly on the corner. I'm going to do another one here at this end which the reason why I was keeping myself kind of zoomed out is because I wanted to keep these nice and in line with each other. And then one kind of in the middle. I can, after I hit escape, I can move these around by just clicking on them and using my arrow keys. and Just kind of lining them up all nice. So now I have my three columns here holding up my roof for my porch. But again, the last thing I want to just show you are some of those websites you can go to to find other components on there. So, don't know why that opened up so small, but one website that's good for components is called Revit City. You do have to make an account with Revit City in order to download anything from them. It is completely free to make an account with Revit City. Um, one kind of bad thing with their website is that it can often be pretty slow. So I'm going to go into the downloads area and we can see that these are just going to have all of the different Revit components that people have made and put onto here. So if I want to search for a specific thing, like let's say I want a, hmm, let's just search for a television. because I want to say I want to put a television in my house. I search and I find quite a few of them in here. You always want to note which product version it was made with. So we're using Revit 2023, so we're not going to have an issue with that too much. But if anyone is using a newer version than what you're running, you're not going to be able to load it in. But if I wanted this um, 40, 40, 54 inch plasma TV, I'd have to first log in which Revit City is being very fast right now. It usually is not the case. And then I click on download now and it's going to download it. It downloaded it as a Revit family. I can click on it. Right now it's just warning me that it was made in 2010 and I'm using 2023. So I'll just say that I want to upgrade it. And then uh, hopefully it's on the other side. Okay, there it is. And then what I'm going to do is say that I want to load this into my project and close it. And then it, in this case, has to be put on a wall because it's a wall-mounted TV. So I can click to place it. 
right now, what this is telling me is that it did in fact make this, I just can't see it in this floor plan. So if I go into my 3D view, I have my TV there. It's currently sitting in my kitchen. So I placed it on the wrong side of this wall, but I can easily then just kind of make or change where my TV is sitting. What I can't do, or apparently I can, I was gonna say is just completely take it off a wall because it's a wall mounted component. Um, if I wanted something else, so let's say I wanted like a dining table. Again, I can search for it. I can find a couple of different options, but these are all just made by people who put them on here for you to be able to download for free. So some of them aren't gonna be great. I can download it. Right now, Chrome is just warning me that they think this is trying to make me download a virus by spitting so many downloads at me. I'll upgrade it. It'll show me it, and then I'll say load into my project and close. And then I can again put my table down in my model. Sometimes the way they look in the floor plan, you might not like too much, but you will then like kind of how they look in the three dimensional view. So you can then of course use the hide in view features to get rid of some of the different parts or pieces within it. Um, another great website to go to for Revit components is called BIM Object. BIM Object is another website where it's free to download Revit components and families. A lot of companies and product designers put their stuff up on here for you to be able to download. And I believe it was actually purchased by Autodesk a couple of like months ago. But we see here that like I have this artificial banana tree. I'll say that I want to download it, sign in with my Google account, because I know I have a BIM object account, which it also is free to make a BIM object, or apparently they're saying I don't. Maybe I have one with this. Uh, hmm. I know I have one. Okay, they could let me just kind of download something, please. Please. There we go, now I'm logged in. Let me download this banana plant. It's asking me all of the different things I could download it as, so we can see here that they have a SketchUp file, an OBJ, which is just a general object, an IFC, not sure what that is, an AutoCAD DWG, and they also then have a Revit one. So I'm just going to say unselect these, but please just give me the Revit family and it'll download it as a Revit family. I can open it up. I can upgrade it. I can load it into my project and close out of the file here. Um, we can see here kind of how it's showing up in the floor plan is like quite detailed within my floor plan. And just it's also showing up as kind of a mesh, not maybe super ideal, but it could be something that when I have it in my 3D view or in like my rendering, it's going to look really nice. So that would just be in my floor plan. I would just want to right click on this object, hide element. So that way it still exists within my project. It's still here in my 3D view, but it's just not visible within my floor plan. Um, some companies too will have Revit files available for them. So Ehrman Miller is a big one where they have, and if I do Ehrman Miller Revit, but they have all of their kind of catalog of different things that you can purchase available as downloadable 3D models because they want you to put them in your SketchUp files. They want you to put them in your Revit work because then you're more likely to use their products and buy their products. So within the rest of kind of the class period regarding this assignment and then also your homework, you're going to want to make sure that you've put in components for all of your kitchen stuff, including your kitchen base cabinets, upper cabinets if you choose to add those, and then all of your bathroom stuff on both the first floor and the second floor. 
your washer dryer, all of your little features that are going to be just kind of mechanical things that would be the contractor's obligation to put into the house. When we go on to our next step, we're going to focus on adding in some components through um, Enscape, which will be creating some cool rendering features and they have kind of their own built-in product library that we'll look at and use.